Southwest Baptist Church this morning. Yeah, man. Hope I had a good week. Yes. Everybody stand and turn to number 124. Your voice. 124. <laughs>
uh, folks with underlying health issues and elderly folks. Uh, but children seem to be a little, a little safer, but obviously there are still some that, that have contracted and we have heard of, of some who have died. So we need to pray for this, continue to pray for our president, those in authority, that God would give them uh, wisdom concerning these things. Amen? 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 God knows we need his help. Uh, continue to pray for Miss Hannah. Uh, wow, she went to the doctor. Should I share all that? No, anyway, she's not far from it, folks. Uh, so you pray, you pray for her, and uh, uh, she she's ready there on the on the verge. So you pray for her and ask God's blessing on her and the baby. And I know God's going to do that. I'm looking forward to meeting the little rascal and uh, and playing with him, and we'll see all that. All right, but pray for Hannah. I uh, continue to pray uh, for Miss Starla. Uh, still recovering from her gallbladder surgery. And, Ask God to bless her. I was thinking about uh, Miss uh, Hazel. Uh, there in the Promise Hospital. Continue to pray for her. They're not uh, Lisa. I don't believe has access to her through a window. Through a window. They have to uh, communicate that way. So, but uh, she she seems to be doing better. But do pray for her. She's got a pretty good road ahead of her uh, for recovery. So we ask God's help for Miss Hazel this morning, and uh, pray also for Lisa and Yvonne. Uh, you bet, I'm sorry. So pray for them that God would bless and take care of them. Good to see Brother Wilbert back with us this morning. He was in the hospital for a little bit, and we pray for him. And uh, where Brother Frank, I know, was out here somewhere. I saw a buck fist with him a while ago. So uh, we continue to pray for Brother Wilbert and ask God's blessing on him. I know there are a lot of other prayer requests. Let me encourage you to please let us know via um, email, text. Um, Facebook, whatever, let us know, tell us, write it down so we can make sure to pray for folks. I know that all of us have folks we're praying for. My brother Dale was back in the hospital, and uh, so pray for him and uh, ask God's blessing on him as they're trying to uh, deal with some things there. Uh, just pray for him. He loves the Lord, and uh, we're glad he's saved. But you pray for Dale this morning. Looking down my list, a lot of folks again. Um, Brianna Phillips, uh, continue to pray for her. She's doing better. She she's not out of the hospital. Not out of the hospital. Okay, continue to pray for her and ask God to bless her. And uh, so a lot of things to, to pray about. I do want to go to prayer this morning, so maybe if you would, anybody with a with a prayer need you'd like for us to remember as we pray. Anybody this morning? All right, Brother Red. Okay. Miss Dana's aunt passed away, so remember this uh, need, and they have the uh, funeral this week, and so pray for pray for the family. Anyone else this morning you'd like to share a uh, prayer request? Anybody? All right. Okay, what about unspoken? Sometimes maybe you don't feel like uh, sharing, but uh, you have not unspoken. All right, lots of hands up this morning. Let's uh, bow to you. I, I'm going to lead us to prayer. I'm going to ask God to meet some of these needs this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you today, today in the name of Jesus, thanking you again, Lord, for all your many blessings. We are a, a truly a blessed people. And God, we, there's not a day I don't wake up that I don't think about the many blessings of God upon my life. Not just material things, Lord, and, that, and, and I can't complain. But Lord, just obviously, just the, 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 the ability to get up and, and to be able to, uh, to, to say I'm a child of God, I'm under the protective hand of God, and uh, just, just to know that you're there, just to know, God, that you walk with us and talk with us. Lord, so thankful for your blessings there. Thank you, Lord, for God's family, folks we can call on and text and check on, and Lord, that check on us, and we can just share our lives one with another. Even though we're in this, this, uh, this pandemic, we know, God, we can still reach out, touch, and, and, uh, and share our lives with each other. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for our church. Lord, we love this place, and we want to just see this place prosper and under your blessings. And so, God, I pray that folks, again, might be blessed when they enter these doors and help bless our visitors, Lord. I pray that they might find a blessing. We pray for folks to be saved. Sometimes we don't know, Lord, how our outreach uh, is affecting others. But, Lord, we know that folks are hearing the gospel through the messages. And I know, Lord, that they're, they're hearing the truth. And Lord, we pray that those things might change lives. And may our church be a catalyst in our community for revival 
This is our prayer, Lord. And God, today we're going to pray for the sick, encourage them, bless them, Lord. And uh, we pray that they might be healed. And those, Lord, with, with child, and pray, God, that you bless Hannah this morning, and Amanda Burke, and Hannah Vogel, and so many that, uh, Lord, this morning need your touch with their bodies and the pregnancy. Then, Lord, for our missionaries, we thank God for each one of them, Lord. We love what you're doing through their lives. We appreciate the letters. Bless them. Encourage them, Lord. And uh, we pray, God, that the ministries might continue on across the world. Now, Lord, we do ask that you bless the message this morning. Help as I preach. God, that everything that is said and done might be a glory to you and a help to God's people. And again, we thank you for all these things. We ask it in Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Let me give you a couple of announcements. Don't forget to tune in Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock. We can continue our study from uh, uh, my office. And I'm enjoying doing that. And uh, I hope that you're enjoying that you are enjoying the uh, the messages, the lessons. Uh, we still have two or three lessons left in this series called "It Happened Late One Night," and uh, we spent two weeks on this uh, this last one. We talked about the night the Lamb of God faced the kangaroo court. Very important for us to understand what happened on that fateful night. But we know God was in it, and we're thankful that Jesus died for our sins. But we'll be talking a, a, a couple of other night scenes coming up Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. I hope that you'll share that time with us over Facebook Live. Also, don't forget, the church still needs to be faithful in your tithes and offerings. Please, please be faithful. We have folks, like I said before, that are sending their offerings in. We thank God for that, not just for the sake of our church, but the sake for our, of our missionaries. We have... Uh, many of you that are also sending in, along with your tithe, the offering, the missions offering. We thank God for that as we continue to support missionaries around the world. Please, please don't forget your offering. Today, as you go out, stick it in the box, and we appreciate that. Uh, continue to pray for our missionaries, by the way, all around the world. Many of them are in tight and hard places, and uh, some of them really are in more of a lockdown mode than we are. Uh, we're really not that, not in a lockdown mode, to be honest with you. Uh, I know a lot of folks, well, I just don't get out. Well, you go to Walmart. Amen. A lot of folks go to Walmart. And, uh, you know, oh, well, I can't afford to go to church. Well, then, then don't go to Walmart. Uh, if you go to Walmart, you can go to church. Let me encourage those on Facebook Live. I'm not fussing, but I'm just saying, look, if you're a little worried about coming back to church, um, uh, do like some do. Come in late. Amen. You don't have to shake no hands. Come in late. Sit somewhere in an isolated place. And then during the, uh, the final prayer, you can sneak out and leave before you see anybody. Amen. But at least we can see you and wave at you. Like, hey, Miss Rhonda, Brother Don, how you doing back there? Amen. Y'all snuck in late. And I'm glad you're here. Amen. Better late than never. Thank God for you this morning. Well, would somebody have a testimony? You'd like to share a quick testimony what God's doing in your life? Maybe a blessing, just something to, to encourage the rest of us, what God, what God is doing. Anyone this morning I'd like to share a quick blessing? All right, Miss Starla. Well, most of you know my grandchildren in Texas, you know, the ones that come from the Texas Baptist Church. And they're just wonderful and they don't get much church with their mom. But this week, serving the Lord. Amen. That reminds me, you know, Brother Caleb has his has his broadcast before uh, the 11 o'clock. How many of you kind of watch that? You see that? So it's sort of looking good. And, uh, you know, he's doing, uh, what's that guy's name? Brother Flutter, Flutter Bomb? Flutter Bomb. Flutter Bomb. <laughs> what a name. Now, I think uh, Josiah has got uh, the itch for it. And so he's getting him a puppet, all right? And he's going to join the gang. And maybe we can get some other of our young people involved. That'd be great. 
to have a puppet uh, broadcast. That would be super cool. So uh, anyway, we're excited about that. But uh, I hope you'll be watching. He's doing a series right now on Hear Heroes of the Faith. And uh, very good, very good. Someone else this morning, I'd like to share a blessing. I'd like to share a blessing. Anybody? All right. Go ahead, Miss Hick. Well, I enjoyed my grandson this last weekend. Yes. And my great grandchildren. And I just feel so blessed. All of my great great grandchildren, well, all my grandchildren, but my yes. great grandchildren that are old enough to know what it means to be saved. Some of them have grown up a little bit. Some of them was getting big on my feet. It's just growing up. It's yeah. growing out a little bit too, wasn't it? Amen. Yeah, he's my oldest great grandson. Yeah. He'll be 23 next month. Man, that's a praise the Lord. Wonderful. Someone else like to share a quick blessing? Love to hear what God's doing? All right. Well, turn this on for me. You know, I'm reminded over in the Gospel of Mark. One of my favorite stories, really not a story, it's a, it's a picture, if you would, where the Lord one day was surrounded by a group of people and the little children were looking, I guess, through the legs of their moms and dads and looking around and spying Jesus and Jesus spied them. And you know the Bible says that he loves the little children, Amen. And so he called them up. He said, suffer the little children to come unto me. And I love this because the Bible says that he, he took them up in his arms. And he put his hands upon them like this. And he blessed them. And I love that. I love it. I would have loved to have known. And maybe someday in heaven we'll find out what the Lord said uh, to those little boys and girls as he was there real close to their ears. But I'm sure he said things like, God bless you. I love you. Hang in there. Don't be discouraged. And so I share that same message with you this morning. And I like the fact that even though we're going through hard times, we're still sheltered, right? Sheltered in the arms of God. It's 
the last mile you must walk. I'll fall asleep and wake in God's new heaven. Sheltered safe in the arms of God. So let the storms raise high, the dark clouds rise, they won't worry me for our sheltered safe within. Put your blinders on this morning and pay attention to what God might be wanting to say to you this morning. And isn't that what preaching's all about? Amen. It's all about some fella getting up and taking the Word of God and just lifting his voice and preaching the Word of God. Why? Because God's trying to get a message to every one of us. Have you ever been in a service where the preacher was preaching on one subject? And somewhere in the course of the message, you got something else. Right. You ever been in a, in a service like that? Amen. I've had people come up to me after a service and say, Wow, preacher, you hit the nail on the head, man. This is exactly what I needed. And they tell me about it. And I didn't say two words about that. <laughs> but that's what they got. Amen. But that's okay. You see, because that's the Holy Ghost. Right. And when the Holy Spirit's in, in charge, you know, he'll take... The Word of God, and uh, it may not be exactly what I'm talking about, but He can apply it Amen. to your heart, to where you need it to be. Amen. Amen. So we're going to hope that this scratch gets out of here in a minute. I'm not sure what that's about. Well, uh, all right, as long as you can tolerate it. Matthew 4. Would you like to stand for a moment? I'll, I'll let you do that. And of course, I love to stand in honor of the reading of God's Word. 
Thank God for visitors this morning. Appreciate you being with us. God bless you so very much. Matthew chapter number 4. And look with me in verse number 1. The Bible says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit. Now it's interesting, not every Bible, and I'll guarantee you, uh, there'll be probably somebody in this room this morning, the word Spirit is not capitalized in your Bible. Uh, I hope it is. It should be. All right? But there are some out there that have a little S. But this is the Spirit of God. This should be a big S Spirit. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward an hunger. And when the tempter came to him, he said, now this is the devil speaking to the Lord Jesus Christ, if thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered, he said, it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Years ago as a young Christian, I determined that I was going to read every word of my Bible. And the purpose, of course, is simply this. I want to know what God has to say. I want to know what God, what has come out of the mouth of God. I want to live. Amen. Live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Look at verse 5. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city. The holy city, of course, Jerusalem. Setteth him on a pinnacle. A high point, if you would, of the temple. And saith unto him, again, the second temptation. If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt, or thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And so the devil took a verse. He didn't have a verse the first time. The Lord shot back at him with a verse. And so he uses a verse this time, but he uses it out of context. And a verse out of context is a pretext. That's right. uh, and so the Lord said, well, I'm telling you, it is also written, let's give some context to this, that thou uh, shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Verse 8. Again, the devil taketh them up into an exceeding high mountain. And I like the fact that in verses 5 and in verse number 8, there's only one way to go with Jesus, and that's up. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You like that thought? He took him up and then uh, couldn't do nothing with him there. So he took him up again into an exciting, exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus, said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Amen. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Now, Father, I ask now that you might help me as I preach today, that you might anoint me with your power. God, let me say what you would say if you were here to say it. I pray that everything that I say today would be both practical and palatable. And Lord, I would, I would say all that needs to be said and, and to leave undone that which ought not be said. But Lord, I truly want to honor you and honor your word. And so, God, so today, Lord, I pray that you do, do that and use me, give me your power. I pray for God's people this morning in person and online that they might, might be settled in right now, focused, ready to hear what God would have to say to them. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen, and you might be seated this morning. I want to speak to you a little while on this subject, the fine line between faith and foolishness. The fine line between faith and foolishness. We're living in a day, I think you would agree with me, of great foolishness. Great foolishness. Foolishness abounds on every corner. We see foolishness in the streets. 
of our country. We see foolishness in the news. We see foolishness in the movies. We see foolishness in politics. We see foolishness even in the sciences and education. And I'm reminded of what Paul told us in Romans chapter 1. That professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. At this very moment here in America, we are making decisions concerning our children. Every community in every city in every independent school district is making decisions about the process of how to bring children back together into the school setting. Is it safe or is it a risk? Should we just jump out on faith and pull our children back into that setting and into that classroom or, or are we being foolish? Our nation is facing the same dilemma concerning the madness that's going on in the burning and the looting and the public defacing by these so-called peaceful protesters, a.k.a. Marxist rioters. Should we just have faith that they'll eventually come to their senses and, and go away? Or are we being foolish by ignoring them? When it comes to mask, should we just faith it or is it foolishness? When it comes to social distancing, is it, uh, should we just faith it or is it foolishness? When the government finally, and by the way, when the government finally discovers a vaccine for this novel virus sometime in mid-November, <laughs> should we take it by faith or do we reject it as foolish? Don't answer I'm trying to just set a stage. Every Christian, every Bible-believing church, are, we're all dealing with these issues, not only on a physical level, but also on a spiritual level. We're all wondering what is faith and what is foolishness when it comes to our ministry, when it comes to our daily living. What is faith? What is foolishness? All of us have heard that phrase. All of us. It's a fine line between faith and foolishness. And, and I'll be honest with you, I believe it. Because I've experienced it. Many of you have also. I admit that there have been times when I've made a decision. And I've told my friends, hey, man, I'm jumping out on faith. You know? This is a, this is a faith move. A faith venture and uh, there's another old adage that goes like this, hindsight's 20, 20. <laughs> Down the road, you look back at that decision and uh, then you realize, you see, them, see some things you didn't see then and you think to yourself, my, 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 how foolish. Yeah. How foolish was I? Had you ever done something that you believed that you were doing in faith and only to look at it in years to come as foolishness we've all been i guess we've all done dumb things amen, amen. hello am i speaking to people this morning amen. amen like the story of the pilot and the doctor and the lawyer and the preacher and the little boy in a plane you ever heard this one yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, the, and the plane's going down we'll tell it anyway mike <laughs> And the plane's going down and the pilot grabs a parachute and jumps out. And then the doctor says, oh, I'm too, I'm too important to die. So he grabs a chute and jumps out. And the lawyer says, oh, I'm too smart to die. So he grabs a chute and jumps out. And then the preacher looks at the little boy and says, well, it's just me and you. And he said, this one parachute, I got, I, you take it. You're still young. I'll go down with the plane. And the little boy looked up and said, don't worry about it. There's still two. The lawyer took my backpack. <laughs> hey. We've all done things that wasn't so bright. Amen. We've all made foolish decisions. But I'll guarantee you at the time you thought they were. Right? right? Yeah. You thought you were doing something really good by jumping out on faith. I can remember, oh... Sometimes a hard thing, but I made a decision some years ago that I was going to go into evangelism. Man, I was going to set the woods on fire. Amen. 
I was going to I was going to be the next Billy Graham, Amen. The next Billy Sunday, yeah. I was I was going to do, and so I ended up quitting a good church, one of the best, uh, one of the better churches I've pastored, and uh, he was wondering if I was going to say best, but anyway, uh, uh, one of the better churches I've pastored, and quit that church and and moved my family to a church we knew little about and to an area we knew nothing about. We left Texas of all things. And, uh, and I went into evangelism. Yes, I preached in over 50 churches in a year. Yes, I saw a lot of souls saved. Yes, we, we, we helped a lot of people, saw some revival in some places. Yes, but I'm telling you, I, I, I was barely able to keep a roof over our head, food on our table. And I left my family alone many nights. Uh, and, and, and there were many nights when I cried myself to sleep and knew that I'd made the wrong decision. Ask God to forgive me. My name means beloved pastor, David, beloved bishop pastor, not beloved evangelist, all right? So, <laughs> that's why we say that there's a fine line between faith and foolishness. Listen to this, please listen to this. Because many decisions that we truly make by faith are seen as foolishness to the world. Get that? I said, because many decisions we truly make by faith, sincerely make by faith, we, we really believe it, are seen as foolishness to the world, and it right. should be. Right. But on the flip side, many decisions that we stupidly make in foolishness are seen as decisions sometimes of faith by even the church. Listen, it works both ways. So the fact is, there is. And the bottom line is this, folks. Let me give away the punchline if I could. But the bottom line is this. Who am I really listening to? That's right. That's the bottom line. Who am I really listening to? Am I being led by the Spirit of God? Or am I being pushed by Satan? Yeah. yeah. That's good. Amen. This is something that every one of us as a child of God should, should discern and learn in our life. Are we being led by the Spirit of God, the sweet Holy Spirit of God, that gentle Spirit of God as He leads through whispers and the still small voice of God? Or are we being pushed by Satan to do something? Yeah. To take a, a risk unnecessarily and foolishly. Amen. Amen. I wrote something down this morning. I didn't get a chance to put it on a piece of paper, so I'll read it from my phone. I put it on my, uh, one of my, on my notepad. Listen to these words. See if they don't make some sense. Faith does not replace logic. Amen. Faith may defy logic, yeah. but it never replaces logic. Faith says that God will meet a need, but logic says we need to work. To supply that need. Well which is it? I say both. We work toward the goal. That's logical. Then God steps in and does something that defies logic. That's right. And meets the need in a way we never expected. We saw that last year. That's right. We saw that last year and we prayed and we worked and we gave trying to pay off the building. And that was the logical thing to do. And that was the faith thing to do. We're asking God to help us. And then as we prayed and fasted and saw God come through with $150,000 to Amen. pay off Amen. our family life center. Amen. This is what also struck me early this morning in my studies. I wrote it down. Sometimes we want to do something risky and we call it faith. But faith is not faith. If you haven't done your homework. That's good. Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen? Amen. If you have studied a decision and you've studied it out, and then you make an intelligent and informed decision, even in the face of looking stupid, that's faith. Amen. All faith involves risk, but not all risk involve faith. That's good. When I was about 12 years old, we lived, uh, uh, my family and I bought a house behind Slitz Brewery. There was some, uh, the old Slitz Brewery 
And in the summertime, boy, you can smell that yeast for some. Uh, anyway, that's a whole other story. I, I, I digress. But there was this great big field full of, full of big piles of dirt. I don't know why they were there, but they looked like cliffs. And I remember one day, we was out riding bicycles, my brother and some friends. And, and so one of my buds said, hey, hey, Dave, won't you get up? You think you're such a good uh, bicycle man. You know, I pop him with these, had my banana. You remember the banana seats? <laughs> Huh? And the wheelie bar. Do you remember that stuff? And putting the cards in the spokes. Anyway, so that was me. That was a sight. You can imagine. So he said, I dare you to go off that cliff. Well, man, I'd do that. Man, sure, I'd go off that cliff on my bicycle. I'm going to land on those wheels. And, buddy, I'll be like evil Knievel. Right. So I got up there and I... Ran back and boy, here I went toward the edge of that cliff. The closer I got to that cliff, the, new I, the, the, the more I knew I had made a wrong decision. <laughs> but I wasn't about to back out. You know, ain't there something about some people? That's all of us sometimes. We make a decision, and about the time we're to make that decision full, full on, we realize, hey, this ain't the right thing to do. The Holy Spirit saying, don't do it, don't do it, and we do it anyway. Yeah. yeah. Just because we, we, we don't want anybody thinking bad about it, you know. Off the cliff I went, instead of me landing on top of my bicycle, the bicycle landed on top of me. And I landed on my wrist, and the palm of my wrist touched, try that sometime, touched the inner part of my, my arm. Every bone in my wrist was, was broken. Yeah, what was meant to be by faith was really an act of foolishness. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So here is Jesus. And the Holy Spirit leads him right off the bat. He's just been baptized, and immediately he's, he's led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Before Jesus can start his ministry, he's got to establish some things. Yeah. You say, wait a minute, he's the Son of God. Well, wait a minute. He was 100% God, and he's still 100% man. Amen. And he was going to operate his ministry the same way we ought to operate our ministry. Amen. He was going to leave us an example. And so before he started out on his ministry, he got alone and the devil tempted him for 40 days and 40 nights and put Jesus, listen to me, he put Jesus on that thin, fine line between faith and foolishness. You still with me? Amen. What will Jesus do on that thin fine line between faith and foolishness. In the text that we just read, we call that the temptation of Christ. Jesus has been presented three different scenarios in which he must make a decision. And of course, Satan was hoping that Jesus would make the foolish decision. The first scenario we see there in verses 3 and 4, where the devil says to the Lord, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. They'd been there for 40 days and 40 nights, hadn't eaten a thing. I don't know how long a body can last without food. You can't last much longer, if that long, without water. But he, but he lasted 40 days and 40 nights without food. Listen, I don't know about you, but I'm, I can't last four hours <laughs> without food, you know. I like them diets where you get to eat like six times a day. Little fortunes, that's better. But the fact is, 40 days and 40 nights, and he's hungry, and the devil says, oh, come on. You're the son of God. Yeah. Ain't nobody around here. Just come on now. Just take, is it wrong for you to feed yourself? Is it wrong that you should take some stones, turn it into bread, and have some, have some biscuits? What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? And the Lord answered him in verse 6. Uh, I'm sorry, in verse number 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Amen. The second scenario, in verses 5 through 7, again, he takes him up and, uh, and puts him up there on the pinnacle and says, all right, jump off. You jump off. The Bible says that you'll be taken care of. Go ahead, jump off. You, you know, jump off in faith. But if Jesus had done that, it would have been an act of foolishness. An act of foolishness, not faith. Thou shalt not tempt. There's sure a big difference between trusting God and tempting God. Yeah. 
A lot of people say they're trusting God when they're tempting God. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? You don't put a gun to your head with a, with a bullet in one of the chambers and spin it around. So I'm just going to have faith. I know God's going to take care of me. Well, that's idiocy. Yeah. That's foolishness. Right. Yeah. That's foolishness. We had a party on our block last night. I guess you call it a COVID party. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. Music blaring, two or three dozen uh, young college and young career people in the backyard, and, and they're all smoking and drinking and dancing to loud music, and, and that's the only thing I can describe that as is a COVID party. I've got to wonder how many is going to come down with it. But besides the fact, uh, they were still going way past midnight until about 3 o'clock this morning. Huh? I told my wife I ought to walk over there this morning before I go to church and just knock on the door. And wish the guy a happy birthday. It was a birthday party. <laughs> you probably wouldn't appreciate it. Well, anyway, back to the story. A lot of foolishness in our world. Yeah. And we say, well, I'm trusting God on this one. No, you may be tempting God on this one. You can't smoke a pack of cigarettes every day for 30 years. And they expect God to keep your lungs healthy. Yeah. Amen. And then the third scenario, verses 8 through 10, he's taken up to a high mountain. He's shown the kingdoms of the world. Now listen, didn't Jesus, wasn't Jesus entitled? Isn't Jesus someday going to be the king of the world? Amen. Sure he is. But this wasn't the time for it. That's right, right. And the, and the devil said, oh, just look, right now I'm kind of over this. I'm the prince of the power of the world and the king, God of this world. Hey, I'll give it to you if you just worship me. And again, the Lord said, you should worship God and God only. Now, so he answered the devil three times. Now, listen carefully. There are only three ways the devil tempts any of us. These three ways. You say, well, there's so many temptations in the world. There are only three. You boil them all down, there's only three. Just three, that's it. Covers all sexual sins, all greed sins, all lust sins, all uh, bad relationship sins, all evils, all perversions, all, all ambitions, all motives. All of it could be boiled down to three temptations. You say, well, preacher, where is that? Go with me. First John. You ready? Here they are. First John chapter 2. You know it. First John, go with me. First John, chapter two. These are the same temptations that were given to Jesus in the wilderness. The same temptations we deal with today. Look at verse sixteen. We'll start at verse fifteen. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, here they are. Number one, the lust of the flesh. And number two, the lust of the eyes. And number three, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Here we have the three motives, the three motives behind every decision, every foolish decision that we make. When you make a foolish decision, it's either because of the lust of the eyes or the lust of the flesh or the pride of life. That's all there is. And that's exactly what Jesus was faced with there in the wilderness. Let's look at it quickly. I know I don't have much time. You say, preacher, what's the difference? First of all, going back to Matthew chapter 4. What's the difference between faith and foolishness? What's the fine line? Number one, here's the points. Number one, it's the difference between conviction and convenience. It's the difference between conviction and and convenience. In verse 3, again, if thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Wouldn't it have been convenient? You're the Son of God. You can do anything. You can work a miracle. It sure would be convenient if you would just make yourself some bread. There's no stores around here, no Walmarts, no bakers. Look, you're way out in the wilderness. You're about to starve to death. You're just skin and bones. What's wrong with you? Make some bread out of these stones. You can do that. Wouldn't it just be convenient for you to use that power that you have as the Son of God? And the Lord answered him with a conviction. Yes, it would be convenient. But it's my conviction 
that it would be better to be hungry and be right with God Amen. than to be wrong with God and full of bread. That's right. right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. He said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You see, the devil's motivation here was the lust of the flesh. That's right. Write that down if you want to in the margin of your Bible. Verses 3 and 4, the lust of the flesh. He, he, see, Jesus had the power to turn those stones into bread, but he chose not to misuse that power just to satisfy his flesh. A lot of people make the dumb decisions today based on the lust of the flesh. Oh, preacher, I've heard it. Oh, preacher, I've got to have her. If I don't have her, I'll die. i got to marry her. Oh, preacher, I've got to. I've just got to. Uh, is it the will of God? Oh, I don't know about that. All I know is i just got to have her. You see, that's the lust of the flesh. That's right. Amen. We're not talking about the will of God now. You're talking about the, the flesh. You're not talking about the conviction of the Word of God and the conviction of our faith that is based on the Word of God. You're talking about a convenience. Sure would be convenient if I had her every day to myself. If I woke up in the morning next to her, oh, that's just what I want, preacher. The lust of the flesh. Many folks are making foolish decisions that are being led, pushed by Satan because of convenience. Yeah. Look, can I tell you something? It's not convenient what we're doing. It's not convenient at all. It's, it's, it's a job to put it all together. It's a job to put it on Facebook Live. It's a job. But Facebook Live was never meant for this kind of platform. I'm sorry to say it. It never was. Uh, it was meant for somebody to take it, put it in front of their face and say, Hey, good morning. How y'all doing? Here I am. That's Facebook. Wasn't meant to, you know, uh, come over like, you know, like it's a big stage production. It's not easy to do. Kind of hard. It's not easy to have to go and mark off pews. I don't like that. Man, we, I, want, I want to open every pew. It's not, it's not, it's, it'd be more convenient just to take down all the signs and say, forget it, you do whatever you want to do. Isn't it funny? Some, some, uh, I used to see on store windows sometimes at the front door. What was it? Remember? No shirt, no shoes, no service, right? Remember right. that? Huh? I saw a fella come in with a big old beard, got no shirt on into a store somewhere the other day, and they kind of said, you need to go put a shirt on. You know? Well, yeah, no shirt, no shoes, no service. We kind of got, and now we got the no mask, you know, with it too. You know? Got to go. And I want to, I want to go in there, kick everything around, and bah, yeah, bah, this is the most inconvenient thing. Or, what, wait a minute. Okay. Is, is it worth losing my testimony over? Yeah. Amen. Even if I don't believe it, is it worth me making a scene? I got a testimony to uphold. I'm a preacher. I'm a pastor. I'm a Christian. That's right. I got conviction. Now, if you want to tell me I can't preach this book, we're going to have a fight. Amen. Amen. That's good, preacher. A lot of people, let's be concerned with what's conviction. Amen. Convenience is come and go. Conviction lasts forever. Conviction is based on God's word, not my word. Conviction is based on God's will, not my will. Conviction is based on God's worship, not my worship. The three Hebrew children, great example of how they took their stand for God and would not bow. I like the old song. They would not bow, they would not bend, and they would not burn. Amen. And they got in there, and the king said, there's four men in there. One of them looks like the son of God. It was. Yes, they took their stand on conviction. That's it right. wasn't convenience. That's right. They could have just said, well, you know, everybody else is doing it. I'll just kind of go down on the knee and back up. I saw this football player on some team, don't even know the team. All the other team was down on their uh, knees during the national anthem, and he was standing up all by himself. I thought, go get him, boy. Amen. Amen. Go get him, boy. I'm about done with the NFL. About done with baseball and all of it. Bunch of overpaid punks anyway. 
Daniel in the lion's den took his stand on conviction. Amen. Would have been convenient just to say, well, I, mean, I can move my prayer time away for a little while. Maybe I'll just take a little hiatus. But he'd been doing that, doing that, doing that. Even when the law came, he kept doing that, doing it, doing right. It got him in trouble. But it's the difference between conviction and convenience. And Jesus said, look, it may be convenient, but it's my conviction that the word of God and doing right is more important than to turn in these right. stones into bread and misuse my power. That's right. What's the difference between faith and foolishness? I've got to go quickly. It's the difference between conviction and convenience. Number two, it's the difference between trusting God and tempting God. I said it's the difference between trusting God and tempting God. Look at verse uh, uh, 5 again. And the devil taking them up, pinnacle of the temple. He said to him, cast yourself down. And he uses the scripture out of context. He'll give his angels charge concerning thee. And Jesus said unto him, verse 7, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Amen. The devil's motivation here was for Jesus to give in to the pride of life. The pride of life. This time Satan even uses scripture to promote it. Listen to me carefully. The devil and his crowd knows how to twist scripture. That's right, bro. Boy, they do. They know how to twist scripture. I heard a preacher the other day. He was preaching on, and somebody I knew, and I was listening to this preacher, and he was talking about, uh, he, he's an evangelist. He was talking about uh, some young evangelists came to him. And they, they said, would you please uh, help us with a dilemma? We're young evangelists. We want to go out and preach the gospel. We're going to go across the country. A lot of meetings. We have a family, little kids. How do we manage, you know, being on the evangelistic trail all the time and still having a good home life and taking care of our children and making sure we get to their ball games and their recitals and all that. And the preacher said something to the effect, he said, in, in essence, you've got to sacrifice your family for the ministry. You've got to sacrifice your family for the ministry. That's what he said. Do I believe that? No. Amen. I like what one other preacher said one time, duties never conflict. Duties never conflict. If it's a duty, you can find a time slot to take care of it. You do it. It's a duty. Sometimes my wife gets aggravated at me because I have a things to do list and sometimes I put her on my things to do list. <laughs> have lunch with Starla. Take her to Subway. Sounds a little cold, doesn't it? She thinks so. But not to me. It's the duty. I want to. Not, it's a pleasure. I, it's a pleasure. It's a privilege. But I need to do it. I want to do it. Because I want to spend time with it. I want her to know that I'm not putting my ministry above my marriage. Amen. Amen. It's the difference between trusting God and tempting God. And a lot of people say, well, I'll just, I'll continue to do what I'm doing in the ministry. And I know my kids will understand someday when they grow up. No, they won't. This right. particular evangelist I was talking about, his two kids are not even in the ministry. Not, they're grown up now, have their own families, not hardly even in church. Yeah. you got to wonder why. Yeah. Trusting God and tempting God. It's a pride issue. How do I know, preachers, if I'm trusting God or if I'm tempting God in a decision? Well, listen carefully. Trusting God is giving in to divine providence, being led. Amen. Tempting God is being pushed. That's how you get pushed. How you tempt God by, by allowing the devil to push you in a situation. Did you know that all the devil's devices come with a Expiration date. Yeah. The devil says, you got to have this, but you got to have it now. You can't wait on that, you got to have it now. And he pushes and he pushes and he pushes like a bad commercial. He's just pushing and pushing it. Let me tell you something. That's the devil. You're tempting God. Well, God, you want me to have that new car, don't you? Don't you want me to have a Cadillac, God? The best life for me, you know, like Joel says, the best life. I want the Cadillac. And God might say, well, someday maybe. Right now, Kia. <laughs> right? That's right. Right now, Kia. Maybe someday, Cadillac. But God, I want it now. I want it now. And the, devil, and the devil throws him up there 
and says, uh, you know, look, you got this, this position as a son of God. If you are, the devil, the, the angel's going to catch you. Just show it. Jump out. My friend, that's tempting God. That's not trusting God. It's based in, in pride and not humility. And then last but not least, and, I'll get that now, and, and we'll be done. We'll look at it again at verse uh, number uh, 8. Wow. That's the devil. Who's going to hold it? Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Oh, that's going to be any better than I. And so the devil takes him up to an exceeding high mountain, shows him all the kingdoms of the world. Verse 8, verse 9. If thou wilt fall down and worship me, I'll give it to you. The Lord said unto him, Get thee hence, Satan. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. How do I know if I'm trusting God or tempting God? It's a matter of, uh, of the difference between God's glory and man's glory. How do I know the line, fine line between faith and foolishness? Is it for God's glory or is it for my glory? The devil's motivation here was the lust of the eyes. He showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the world and the glories of them. But my friend, the Bible still says, 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Amen. Is it God's glory or my glory? I kind of think, looking back on it, when I made that decision to go into evangelism, and who knows, God might call me back into evangelism someday. I don't know. I don't know what God's plan is for me. But I'm, I'm saying it wasn't the right time. And I stepped out and made a foolish decision. I thought it was faith. But maybe just a little bit of me at that particular time was thinking, boy, I got it. I, I got this, this it. You ever heard I got the it back, the X factor. You know? I remember one of the meetings, one of the first meetings I went to, man, I, I got up and I was preaching to big name preachers. And all this preacher invited me to preach. Man, I had a house full of preachers. And boy, I preached the message. Boy, everybody was, amen, amen. And I come down, I thought, man, that's pretty cool. I like this. But that was the problem. I was getting plenty of glory, but not God. Fact is, many times we'll make a decision and it's all wrapped up in how much it means to me instead of how does it mean anything to God. Like what I'm doing right here preaching. I, I want God to be the glory. So I have to be careful as a preacher not to get in the way of the Lord. Sometimes I can say something. I was at a camp meeting one time and, and, I, and I used a word that is uh, kind of a borderline slang word. I won't tell you what it was. Wasn't bad, okay, but, but but it was to a lot of people that were there. They didn't like it, and I said it. And guess what? It was the only thing they remembered about the whole message. I couldn't say nothing else. I mean, everything I said, they didn't remember nothing else but that. So I got labeled a cussing preacher. But anyway, uh, no, I'm kidding. But I'm just saying. Sometimes we have to be careful not to get in the way of the Lord. That's right. Amen. The Lord's trying to do something. Amen. The Lord's trying to do something. But the devil, conclusion, the devil was bringing him to a point to test his, his willingness to stand by conviction, to trust God and not himself, and to be led of the Spirit and not led by his own pressures by the devil. Boy, don't let the devil pressure you into anything. Amen. Man's glory is wrapped up in the glories of this world. God's glory is wrapped up in the glories of another world. Here's the conclusion, verse 11, and I'm done. Then the devil leaped. And behold, angels came and ministered unto him. When you make a decision based on faith and not foolishness, I'll guarantee you, angels are going to come minister to you. You're going to feel the peace of God. Amen. That passes all understanding. There'll be peace in your heart. You know you did the right thing. You know you did the right thing. Because God will give you peace. So let's be careful in these days and ages. Let's don't get too aggravated. Let's don't get too frustrated. Let's don't get too angry. A lot of things are happening that could pull us this direction or that direction. Yeah. Let's be careful that we stay on that one main line. I'll give you this illustration. If your life was 
a, a line between point A and point B. Point A and point B. God's trying to get you from point A to point B. The further away it is, the easier it would be to say, well, let's just notch this a half a degree this way. Or a half a degree that way. And you know as well as I that that little notch one way or the other is going to land you at the end of the way, way off base. That just that little degree that you took this direction, that direction. It's our job to stay on that thin, fine line, walking Amen. in by the being led by the Spirit of God day by day, doing what God wants us to do. Amen. Hopefully, by the end of our race, we can say like Paul, "I, I have fought a good fight. Amen. I finished my course. I kept the faith." Amen. That's what I want, and I hope that's what you want. Amen. 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 Father, we sure do love you this morning. And we sure do thank you, Lord, for helping us. God, you're a good God. And we pray today, Lord, that you might help us to make right decisions. There may be some folks here this morning that they're about to make a decision they should not make. It's a foolish decision. Not based on God. It's based on some pressure from somebody or some devil. And they're not trusting God. They're doing it out of convenience and not conviction. Lord, I pray today that God's people would be sensitive that they might ask God uh, for direction, and then as they walk in the Lord's will, find that peace that passes all understanding. And I ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together.